Watch out! Big car booting again. Um, I've been went out yesterday car booting and this morning. Uh, well, let's start with Saturday. Uh, Saturday was a complete waste of time. I visited three car, well, two car boot sales and a and a Saturday market. And the only transformer thing I saw was I think it was a knockoff. It was um, like a primary coloured sort of you know sort of kiddie thing. It had a moulded Autobot symbol. And it transformed into some kind of, very crudely transformed into some kind of truck. Um, you know, but it had visible head syndrome on it, and it was it was like it was like it made blocks of yellow plastic, blue plastic, green plastic, red plastic, and it was no, didn't go for it. Yeah, I went to um, Coppice Lane, up near up up near was it uh, Tamworth? Um, first thing in the morning absolutely nothing there got there too early dismal weather <sighs> nothing to be found there so then i went to wellsbourne market um was looking around wellsbourne Mar again got to wellsbourne market a bit early didn't think i'd find any transformer stuff there which i didn't but i found a few other things that i wanted um and then i went to uh stratford racecourse stratford upon avon and a bit disappointing it was quite small um just saw that one thing and that was it for yesterday so waste of time complete waste of time so I thought well I've still got money in my pocket let's go out this morning so I thought I'd hit the the usual local car boot sales that's uh, CJ's and Stonely and uh, went to Stonely and uh, broke my duck so let's get started the first thing I picked up is um, Cyberverse animated, not animated, uh, Prime RC Cyberverse Legions I think um, yeah she's uh, missing you know the handlebars and the front fairing for a bike mode so she, she still forms a perfectly poseable robot but you can't quite form her into a bike because she's missing the front part of the bike which is a shame and also I found a leg off you know Cyberverse Ratchet. So bought them two 30 pence. I I'm I'm gonna pick up bits and pieces of robots when I see them because you never know when they might come in handy. Either you know to put on a bot another bot that you pick up that's missing bits or you know trading with people. So that's what I'm gonna do with those. So broke me door because I thought right off oh, find find found something you know CJ's usually find something at CJ's so went on a bit more and then I found these fellas Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Soundwave and next to him we had uh, Skyquake now Soundwave is for the most part intact he's missing two of these wings um, I have been looked at you know, the transformation he does transform I'm not going to transform him because he's he's a bit of a faff but he, he forms a fairly serviceable robot so that's good and it, it's obviously the one in the dark blue colouring rather than the, the, the grey so yeah he's alright he was um, uh, he was a pound and Skyquake who was next to him you know uh, 50 piece that's one pound 50 you know one pound 50 for the for the two unfortunately even though Skyquake makes a decent plane when you go around the back he's uh, got a load of open ball joints he's missing all his arms and legs so I don't know whether to class him as a complete robot um, so he just forms a head and torso. <laughs> so I might keep him as spare parts. Can't really count him as a, a proper, a full robot. Anyway, got those dudes, and then I thought, right, let's let's move on. Went to Stonely. Stonely was shut because they've got a, a race for life event going on at Stonely. So no Stonely car boot sale today, which disappointing because I wanted to go to Stoney because two times I've been to Stoney I've managed to pick something up again 
you know, and the last time I went there I got them two Star Wars crossover figures from the lady who had a big box of toy junk and I wanted to, if she was there again I wanted to have a route through to see if I could find some of the missing bits for them uh, crossover figures. But uh, yeah, so I was for um and ah in, shall I go to the, the other car boot sale, eBooter, eBoots car boot sale which is affiliated to the one at um, Coppice Lane and that's um, up at the Belfry and I thought the, well the weather's nice today for starters and I got to Coppice way too early so I've, I've been round CJ's and went to Stoney and, and so I thought well okay I'm gonna get there a bit later so hopefully things will be a bit busier and as I was driving up I was on the A446 and I come to a roundabout on the way and I saw this sign um, Furnace End car boot sale, massive car boot sale on today, and I thought, oh, another one. So I did a bit of a D, I doubled back down the dual carriageway and did a bit of a detour up to this Furnace End place. A couple of miles driving down some, you know, really twisty back roads, and I get to this Furnace End place. And it was, it was big. It was pretty big, and I was quite impressed. So I started walking around. There was probably, I don't know, about a dozen rows of sellers. And I went up and down, up and down, up and down. I saw these um, movie sort of uh, quick flip change things, you know, like barricade, which is it's like a like a super deformed barricade, and it's and you, you click a button and he flips open and his wheels spin round. He's got like some sort of like mechanism in him where you know you, kind of hard to describe. But I saw loads of those. I must have seen about the course of the day I must have saw about five of them things but I'm not interested in gimmick toys I want you know, proper transformers so I was going up and down these aisles of sellers a couple of people who had like tables and tables and tables of toys you know like action figures like action men you know WWF figures you know He-Man stuff and and then they have like boxes and boxes of you know toy cars but no transformers stuff and I, I was I was beginning to lose heart and I was under like the second to last row just you know long pin along and I come to another toy seller who had a big 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 table of toys and he had these things in plastic bags on the end of his table and I thought what's that and I looked at one of them and I thought oh my god that's supreme class Cybertron Starscream <laughs> one of the biggest Transformers you can get. Oh, obviously, next to Fort Max and um, Generations um, Metroplex. But, you know. Okay. Start off, he's missing a few bits. Most notably, the other one of these is missing his weapon pod on this side. Um, what else is he missing? I've got no Cyber Planet keys for him. So he's missing those. Uh, he's, he's supposed to have some some wings or a, a tail plane or some wing sections in the back. They're missing, and he hasn't got his crown, which I think is a, a, a bit that's that was only a, ta a, 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 a thing that was only that only came with the reissued version. But <laughs> my first Cybertron figure, and he's clicky. He's Nice and clicky. So yeah, ten quid. Now, car boot sale money—that that's a lot. But at this point in time, I was getting so desperate, so desperate to buy something Transformer that I thought, sod it, I'm having him. And he was in a plastic bag, and I didn't notice the fact that he got one of his major bits missing. So so I just bought him. But of course, next to him were a couple of other bots. Revenge of the Fallen Leader Class Jetfire. Now, again, 10 quid. Another big bot. I mean, the last couple of car boot sales I've gone out, I've, I've been picking up, you know, little shit like this. You know, mini cons and cyberverse figures. But, oh no, we're on to the big stuff now. But, of course, you've got to pay for it. Now, here's electronics work. 
Uh, unfortunately, he's missing, again, missing quite a few bits, mostly in his plane mode. Three of his wings are missing. The panels that cover up his head, the, the bit that goes over his thing at the back is missing. He hasn't got his cane or his weapon. And he's got a bit of a damage on the hook that goes onto when he combines with Optimus, that's broken off. But still, he's a big impressive figure. And even though he's got a lot of bits missing, he still forms, you know, a fairly serviceable robot. So again, decent haul, 10 quid. And uh, it didn't stop there. Universe Silver Bolt. And this guy is in pretty much mint condition. Um, he has got so much click going on. Virtually every joint is clickety click. Ooh, listen to that. His electronics work. So, you know, and he's got light piping, but it only only works with the you know electronic light and, lights and sounds. But he's, he's near perfect. No damage on him. Okay, he's missing his weapon, but apart from that, he's fully intact. In good condition, no damage, no wear, electronics work, eight quid. Can't whinge at that. And then we've got... The seller had another small bot. He says, he says, oh, oh, he was selling for four quid. He says, oh, I'll throw this in for three quid. This. Now, I can't, I haven't been able to find out exactly who this is. I know it's a repaint of a bludgeon mold from, I think, um, uh, Dark of the Moon line. So, if somebody can tell me exactly what this who this is supposed to be it's a decepticon um it's in like you know sort of snow camo and it's based on the bludgeon version of this mold so if somebody can tell me who this is it'd be much appreciated because i've been searching the internet and I, I can't find out who it is but it's in perfect condition missing his weapon but you know it's got light piping He's got a bit of an auto-morph on him. I'm not going to transform him now, but he's in mint condition. Three quid. Happy with that. So, that was great. You know, Furnace End wouldn't have gone there normally. Um, it was just, oh, I just saw the signs at the side of the road while I was going to another car boot sound. I thought, I'll, I'll try it. It was big. For the most part, there was bugger all there. While I was walking around, I saw... <laughs> I saw a, a young kid being pushed around in a pram and he was clutching a, you know, a leader class Revenge of the Fallen Megatron in his hands, you know, and it's for, oh, bloody hell, is that what I missed out on? Anyway, so I was quite pleased with that at that point. And I didn't have a lot of money left because obviously, you know, I just spent 31 quid on four bots and I only had about six, seven quid left. So I thought, shall I bother going to, you know, the Belfry? I thought, well, I'm halfway there, so I might as well. So I drove up the road to the Belfry, and the Belfry was, again, a nice, sizable car boot. Plenty of people there, the weather was good. Had to pay a pound to get in. Okay, so that, that cut into my, my funding a bit. And I walked up and down the aisles, up and down, up and down, up and down, uh, and I was starting to lose faith until I came to a stall with some, uh, you know, usual tap and a few toys and I was looking in this box and I found a couple of things firstly I found uh, you know 2007 2000, no the first movie deluxe jazz um, yeah unfortunately he's missing his back the, the, you know, the tailgate section and he's got no head. His head's gone. No weapon either. But a pound. 
at the, at the time, I was umming and ahhing about it. I thought, well, I'm going to go around the rest of the car boot cell, see if there's anything, you know, else worth having. If not, I'll come back and buy them. As it happens, there wasn't, so I went back and picked him up. Yeah, he's got a few bits missing, but... The funny thing is, this is the second one of these I've seen in three days. Because two days ago, um, I was going uptown and, I, and I, I got this idea into my head. Um, I wonder if Transformers find their way into charity shops. So I thought I'd test this little theory out. So I went on to a street in Leamington Spa where I live where there's a number of charity shops and I, I went through some charity shops, I think it was uh, Cats Protection League, RSPCA, uh, Oxfam and the Red Cross. The first three, there was nothing to see, nothing in there so I came back out. Then I went into the Red Cross and again there was nothing in there of any interest. And I was about to leave and then I, I looked and there was a room out the back with the door open and I looked through into this room and there was more stuff in there. I failed to notice there was a sign on the door, but back back to that in a moment. Anyway, I went in, there was two women sort of talking over a counter, and there was you know, lines of books and stuff, and there was a little, little crate of stuff, you know, down to the right. And there was like a, a like a little toy street sweeper type thing there that caught my eye. And I, I was looking at it and thought, well, that's not a transformer. Went to put it back into the box, and I looked at the back of the box, and what's this at the bottom? So I had a little dig, and lo and behold, another one, one of these popped out. It was in an absolutely filthy condition, covered in dust and dirt, um, in a semi-transformed state. I couldn't tell whether it was complete, but I sort of picked it up and started fiddling with it, and then the next thing I know, the woman says, oh, excuse me, you're not supposed to be in here. And uh, it turns out it was the, the area of the shop out the back where they take in the donations for the charity shop, and then they they process them, they you know, check them out, make sure they're okay, in good condition, and then they sort of clean them up, they stick a price on them and then stick them in the shop. So any everything in that room hadn't been checked out and priced up yet. And when I looked back, there was <laughs> there was a side on the door that I hadn't noticed saying, you know, private, you know, staff room, keep out, you know. But the door had been left open because it was a hot day and they was trying to ventilate the shop because they had the the back the door into the back alley open as well to get some airflow through the shop so you know i asked them i said well is there any chance you could you know you know you know put a price on it for me now so i can have it now and she's and they said well our, our woman who does that he's upstairs and uh, you know so i thought well it's going to be too much hassle so i'll put it back down made my apologies and left but it just bugged me a bit you know i could have had that you know, another figure that was within my grasp and it's local. So later this week, I'm going to go up to the charity shop in the vain hope that they might have priced it up and put it on the shelf. They might not have, or they might have done and somebody might have bought it. It's a gamble I've got to take, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. Hopefully, if I manage to pick him up, I'll have two of these and hopefully the other one will be a little bit more complete than this one. Anyway, getting back to the car boot sale. I picked that thing up, but then I also picked up another bot that was in the same box. Now, warning, knockoff, review time. Get a load of this. Look at that. Is that not a perfect representation of a sports bike? And it's quite big. It's got die cast on it. You know, it's, it's like, like like one of those model motorcycles, you see. But this is a Transformer. Right? Okay. Well, you pull that back. You flip the, those panels open. There's a little, little, little prop you put across to hold them open. You then fold out the arms which are sort of folded away in the engine compartment right now I played with this for a while at the stall 
before I actually bought it because I was trying to figure out how the hell does this thing transform because I thought where are the legs because you've got the back half of the bike here and the front half of the bike here because it's, it's only semi transformed at the moment anyway pull that up flip that up twist it round and push it down then you take the back half of the bike and you split it to form the legs now I don't think that that forms the legs because these all, they also do that they also fold out like that and they've got no other joints in them other than they split and they, they're pivoted onto the the central section and of course then the final thing is the head reveal and I don't know if you can see that but it's very much an analog of Optimus Prime's head it's <laughs> but the thing is this this front part of the bike I mean that, that that's the robot there right got the head here got the legs body arms and then you've got this bit of bike sticking out the front now how stupid is that it's like they've sort of sort of done the top half but the rest of it they just couldn't be arsed with it they sort of lost 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 the will to you know design it any further and you know there he is in robot mode and you know all this is in the front of his head so he can't see anything and the legs are just the back part of the bike just split in half he has got arms and he has got you know some articulation in his arms but it just it just boggles the mind what why would they make a half assed job of the robot and but the bike is is so brilliant the bike is 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 virtually perfect and yet the robots <laughs> it's just a joke but i'm going to pick up knockoff transformers if they've got something about them that's a bit different a bit no uh, like a a bit of a bit of, bit of you know, like an air of quality about them. I've already picked up that truck uh, a fortnight ago, and now I've got this thing. And the two reasons why I've picked this up is one, it forms a kick-ass bike mode. You know, the alt mode is perfect. There's no robo kibble on it at all. Right, it's a perfect. It just looks like a model bike. And then it's the amount of die cast because these things are die cast and. The whole center, the whole center section of the you no, know, the robot body is die cast. It's got a shed load of die cast on it, you know, and yet it's just let down by a half-assed robot mode. And you know, that's what I just can't get my head round. So, yeah, I um, took a gamble with it. it. Again, it was only a quid. And uh, so there we go. Now uh, let me think. Pull that. There we go. Back to you know, well, perfect bike mode. But yeah, it was you know, decent mornings sort of work. The old car boots. Um, picked up nine bolt, nine bots. Um, well, I'm not really about well, eight if you discount this guy because he doesn't really make a robot because his arms and legs are missing. But you know, thirty-four pound eighty spent. I mean, it's the most I've spent on robots at a, a car boot sale, but look at the stuff that I've got. The only other thing I want to say about you know buying robots from car boot sales is there's a high chance that they will be missing bits or accessories. So don't expect to find anything that's complete. Nothing that I bought today is in is fully intact. 
they've all got something missing from them, be it accessories or you know bod body parts or you know bits they're all got issues but you know some of them you can live with i mean the best ones i mean this guy apart from a weapon he's absolutely perfect right and this guy as well again it hasn't got a handheld weapon but he's got a weapon built in you know he's got a weapon that comes out of his chest so and he's got this gun on here so he's not totally without weapons so he, he's probably good as he is so there we go 25 minute uh, waffle about a car boot uh, sale um, I hope you're watching Mr John John yeah so that's all I've got to say for today so, see yous.